You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications button so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. I done my first uh, sparring session, and uh, the boy went to come throw a jab at me, and I kicked him in the head. Turned the kick off, and he fell. And uh, he's like, "Oh, the coach, big guy, Alex Kelly, his name is." He jumped in and picked the boy. You can't do that. What are you doing? What are you doing? You can all let me kick here is box. And I said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's, it's my habit. I just heard about this thing. Could you know the law of attraction? Yeah, the secret. Aye, I just heard about that like a year, two years ago. And I was like, I've been doing that for years. Like, cause everywhere I went, like to go to tournaments, I'd be writing down bits of paper, just say that the Tamar tournament or whatever, or it'd be Josh Taylor, Tamar tournament gold, best boxer of the tournament and all that. I'd be writing it down on bits of paper for ages and ages and until I got that tournament come and I'd come back with a gold medal and I'd get, I'd get the, the mm. best boxer of the tournament and things like that and so I was like I've been doing that stuff yeah, for, yeah. for so years you're already putting out the universe see if you write it down it becomes 60% clear yeah. in your mind aye, and more likely to happen was that when your relationship with the McGuigans broke down aye it started can it, what what happened was it, oh it was kind of happened with what happened with Carl at the time and uh, Carl was obviously told me everything and I was thinking like if they can do that to somebody they consider like family one of their own and, what they're going to do to me you know and I was very green at the time I put every faith and really trusted them and they, they make it the persona that they're, 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 they're your pal they're this they're, they're this way they're that way but they, they couldn't give a shit and they really couldn't give a shit I'm going to kill you like I'm going to kill you I'm like oh, I could feel myself getting off like tense Ben, we're on today's guest. We've got Scottish boxer doing? Josh Taylor. All How right. are you, brother? Yeah, all good, all good, mate. Yeah, excited to be on your show. I've been watching to, your yeah. uh, podcast and doing well, so I've been wanting to come on for a while and we've been trying to get it done for a while, so it's yeah. good to finally get on. It's good for you to be here, mate. You're f- absolutely flying, undefeated. They've now got you in the top 10 best pound for pound fighter in the world, mm. which is unbelievable, mate. You've beat some high class names now. Now you're going levels. You've um, had a great career so far and you're still young, still fit, still healthy. I can't wait to see what your, the future brings for you, man. I'm, I'm excited myself, you know, it's uh, even then where you say top 10 best pound for pound in the world, it's just that it doesn't feel kind of real at the minute, mm. do you know what I mean? It's uh, some great achievement and then it's it's crazy, like, you know, I'm not really in the sport for all that big recognition, I'm just going to be the best that I can be, you know, I'm just yeah. wee Josh for Preston Pans, I've not changed much at all, you know. Mm-hmm. So, aye, it's crazy, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm hungry for more. You know, I've no I'm not finished yet. I'm no um, I, I'm not, I've still got a lot of proving myself to do. I think yeah. I don't think I've reached my full potential yet. So, you're unified just now, unified champion, yeah. Um, IBF, WBA, Ring Magazine, mm-hmm. uh, Muhammad Ali Trophy as well. You know, it's uh, I've got some titles to my name already. So, yeah, yeah I'm I'm I'm, uh, I'm proud of myself. So you should far. be man. Every boxer I've had on speaks very highly of you. They used to basically saying that you're the future of British boxing for what mm. you're going to go and what you're, you can achieve is, is good, man, to have somebody Scottish as well that's at the forefront and people are calling out their name this time. And there's not been many in the last few years. Scottish had Ricky Burns in that. Yeah. Um, who was freeweight world champion. Yeah, that's, that's, you know, that's brilliant as well. Ricky, Ricky is what a fighter he is as well. Mm. Do you know what I mean? The freeweight world champion, I think it's the only person in Scotland to do it. It's a, uh, it's brilliant. So as a wee nation, mm. we're doing all right for ourselves as, uh, in the boxing world. You know, mm-hmm. we've had we've done well for ourselves uh, for ourselves in the boxing world. So yeah. I, we're we're a good wee fighting nation. Good man. I always go back to the start of my guest brother. Where you grew up and how it all began. Aye. Uh, so I am from a, a wee a wee mining and fishing village uh, about 15, 15, 20 miles outside Edinburgh, east of Edinburgh, called Preston Pans. It's uh, a lovely wee place to grow up. It was, you know, it was a. Uh, there wasn't much to do. There wasn't much to do at all. I mean, there's no any, there's no any sports centres in the place. You know, no swimming pools. You know, although they've got the fourth and fourth, the river. Mm-hmm. We used to go go jumping in as a kid. You know, so I had a great upbringing. You know, it was a 
I was with my pals, you know, whatever was on the telly, we were out cycling the bikes or, you know, way up the woods, stealing golf balls or stealing golf carts and, you know, just boys mm. being boys, you know, it was, uh, I had a good upbringing, you know, um, a nice wee place, pressing pans, it was always, we were always out and about, so I, it was good. How's your parents and stuff? I had a great upbringing, you know, my parents, uh, um, I, I owe a lot to them, you know, I owe, I owe everything to my parents, you know, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be where I am today, you know, because they, they backed and, uh, sort of, they sort of backed every decision I made to do. So um, everything I do, I owe, I owe to my parents. So yeah, it's good. I. How did you go on at school, Josh? I was good at school. You know, I was a. Uh, I wasn't much for the classes, and you know, mm. it was kind of uh, school for me. I uh, was just a laugh. You know, I went to, I went to all the classes and done the classes and done well and come away with a couple of normal sort of grades. But I, I never really stuck in at school. You know, it was just a. Uh, it was. School was a great kind of laugh for me with all my pals and mm. brilliant and uh, just messing around, you know, just going out all the time with my pals and having a good laugh, really. Yeah. So, aye, it was good. So you weren't a nuisance, a pain in the ass, just, just wasn't a, a pain in the ass, but kid. everybody like we grown up in pressed pans. We we know having much to do. It was quite a, I wouldn't say a rough area, but it was tough. Do you know what I mean? Because there wasn't much to do, you had to really st stick up for yourself you if you couldn't stick up for yourself you got picked on or if you didn't stand up for yourself you got picked on so i always found myself in fights growing up i think i think partly 90 percent of that was because i was small i was very small and uh as my dad says i had a bad temper i've got the breaking strain of a kit kat so <laughs> uh, i used to i used to just lose my temper and because mm -hmm. i was so small as well you know i used to always find myself in fights growing up um Nothing malicious, but just just always fighting. Like growing up, for I can remember when I was about five, six year old, you know. So yeah, everywhere I went, I was just always in fights at school, and you know, I was just uh, stuck up for myself. I never mm. had any big brothers or big cousins to you know say, oh, I'll get my big brother to you and all that. You know, it was always I was just myself, yeah. one man army. So I I found myself in a uh, a lot of fights growing up, um, and I think that's you know. Why you became a boxer? Why I became world, <laughs> why I became world champion? Yeah. yeah. Um, started off actually very early age with Taekwondo, um, from the age of five. Um, yeah, for the age of five, yeah, for the age of five, started doing Taekwondo. I got myself a black belt when I was like 12, 13, You know, and then I started teaching that, teaching kids, and discipline was sort of drummed into me for an early age. You know, being respectful with my elders and. Um, Yes sir, no sir, with the with the Taekwondo stuff and always taught discipline and respect. So I was all, I always had good discipline as a kid as well through the Taekwondo and also my parents, you know. So I was quite scared of my dad when I was younger. So um, I, I had a good upbringing and good, uh, taught a lot of uh, discipline. So that, that was good. That stood in good stead from a boxing, I would say, you know. Did you, because you were, would you know, junior world champion or something or European champion? Yeah, 15, I, got, 14, I got a 15. bronze medal at the European Championships, um, and I was British champion as well, you know, so it, it's a different, uh, it's not the, the Olympic taekwondo with the point score and stuff, it was mm. a full contact one, so it was good. So that definitely put me instead and gave me a little bit of a head start for when I, when I started boxing, you know. Do you think that gave you an advantage getting into boxing? Because I know it was at Lomachenko, did you know, used to be, do dancing or something? Or one of the boxers used to be like ballet dancing or something like that, and then you see them in the ring. That uh, there's a massive difference. Yeah, I think it um, it gave me it gave me like the coordination. You know, I, I knew how to sort of the stance. You know, um, and that's probably where I get my my good feet work from. Was from taekwondo switch and switching stances. I was constantly switching stances mm -hmm. and stuff. So I kind of had the basics, say how to throw punches and the sort of feet work. You know, so that sort of gave me a head start. Um, but I remember the first time I went into a gym and then the first time they asked me to spar, I was still kicking people in the head for about yeah. three weeks. Uh, <laughs> so uh, it took me a wee while to get out mm -hmm. of that, yeah. How, what made you want to do the transition? I don't really know. And I don't really know what, how I really got into boxing for a start. Um, none of my family, like, boxed. And as I say, in Preston Pans, there was nothing, like, there was no sports clubs, no, like, sort of youth clubs or, you know, anything to do, really. You know, it was just, there was a couple of football pitches, um, five sides that the lights were on every night. And that was always heaving every night, you know, with, with young kids, you know, the pitches were full, the running track was full. 
outside the grass was all full and fights going on everywhere, you know, because everybody's wanting a shot on the pitch and stuff. It was brilliant. So, yeah, there was there was nothing really to do. I mean, the nearest boxing club for me was up in Meadowbank Sports Centre where my mum worked. And uh, that used to take me about an hour after school to get up on the bus. So I used to come straight home from uh, high school and go straight on the bus up to Meadowbank. And it used to take me about an hour. So dedication um, was there. So I, but what happened was, um, oh, aye, there we go, that's it. So I, my mum works at Meadowbank Sports Centre mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> at the time, Alec Arthur was sort of the main boxer in, in Edinburgh at the time, you know, he was doing well, training for European fights and things like that. And he trained at Meadowbank under the stair where the boxing gym is. And uh, during holidays, you know, like Meadowbank would do like sort of sports school things like Easter holidays and that, you know, like, you know, he would play football and this and that. So I used to go up there with my mum and stuff when I had, used to go on holiday. And um, I went to the school and I, I didn't really want to do it, the the sports thing. And I saw Alex Arthur was down. I used to watch him on the tele boxing. And my mum says, oh, he's doing the training. So I says, can I go down? And she asked Alec to go down. I went down and I watched them and then I started sort of punching the bags. And Alec come up to me and he was like, watch me hit the bags. He was like, you boxed before we, man. I was like, nah, nah. And I was just sitting there like that the whole, the whole session, just never said a word the first day, just watching him. And he was like, he stopped and he went, eh, you're doing my head in, wee man. You're sitting there doing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you're doing my head in, wee man. You're just sitting there doing nothing. Get up and hit the bag or something. Like, so I said, I got up and uh, I was sort of like, oh, I was just sitting watching him. And oh, you know, and, uh, I got up and started hitting the bags. And he came over after he was finished and he was like, you've done boxing before, wee man. I says, nah. I says, I'm black belt to take one though. He says, oh, you look like you've definitely boxed before. You come back tomorrow and we'll do a bit of training and that. And uh, start, that's how it basically started. I started, I'd done the whole two weeks. Uh, Easter holidays training with Alex Arthur sort of just going down hitting the bags and once he was finished I would get a wee bit of pads with his coach and yeah that was sort of how it, how it started mm -hmm. is that how it went then? that's how it started aye mm -hmm. and then uh, then my mum figured out uh, well not figured out but sort of found out that um, there was actually Middle Bank Boxing Club um, on a Monday and Wednesday it used to go on a Monday and Wednesday night it used to go down to that gym you know so I started doing that at about about I was about 14 or 15. I so think quite a late start. Uh, well 15, I think people. I started. Mm -hmm. 15, I think I started, I. Um, I started going down Monday and Wednesday nights with about three of my mates for school, straight after school. And I think they lasted like three weeks and then this one by one dwindled away and I just kept going. I just fell in love with it, I. Did you have a passion for it? Did you see yourself being... I, I think what it was, was it was just... Never had any intention of becoming a boxer um, or anything like that. I just loved the training because it was something... Uh, different do you know what I mean it was like I was just doing taekwondo and the other patterns and sparring it was just something different something fresh and I started it and um, I was hitting the pads and bags and I'd only been there about three weeks and um, the coach asked me if I wanted to spar and I was like oh no you know and I, I used to get really nervous walking at the gym because like the speed bags was going and the bags were going and they were all looking at you there was a couple of Scottish champions in the gym and I was like do you want to spar and I was like shitting myself I was like oh, I'm going to get my head punched in here I've never boxed before in my life like I'll jump in I've done it and uh, I've done my first uh, sparring session and uh, the boy went to come throw a jab at me and I kicked him in the head <laughs> <laughs> turn, turn the kick off and, he, and he fell and uh, he's like oh the coach big guy, Alex Kelly his name is he jumped in and picked the boy you can't do that what are you doing what are you doing you can all let me kick here's box and I said, I'm sorry I'm sorry it's it's a habit I did take one mm -hmm. for the uh, fifth minutes. He went, oh, that's where you've got the, the movement and that. And I says, I says, you, you can't do that, pal. You just can't do that. So for about three weeks, uh, I was, when folk were coming and attack me, I was sort of half lifting my feet. So it took a wee while to... Mm -hmm. uh, to adjust. To, to adjust for kicking. Aye. And uh, <laughs> that was it. But he says, aye, you're, you're, you're doing really well. And I was holding my, my own and sparring with Scottish champions and stuff. And... Um, I, was, I think it was about six months later. He was like, "We've got the East, the Eastern District Championships coming up. We're going to enter you. Do you want to? Do you want to? Uh, do you want to fight?" And I says, "Aye, I'll, I'll do that. Aye, I'll, I'll do it." And uh, we turned up there, and the coach has turned up, and he's forgot all the kit bag. All I had was a, I bought a pair of boxing boots, and a wee cup, and uh, we got there, and it's like ten minutes before my, 
I've got to start getting warmed up before it started and he's like turned up and he's not got any kit and he's late and he's like where's all your stuff and I'm like oh, you've got oh, I've not got any equipment so he had to go away come back I had to borrow someone's shorts he managed to get a vest got warmed up and um, I didn't even I'd done my own kind of wee warm up because he was away mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, I've jumped in and uh, I drew against a boy called Callum Susans who's actually a good pal of mine now he was a uh, I had three, I ended up having three fights with him, but he was Scottish champion. He'd had like 30 odd fights and he'd only been beaten twice or something. And I was like, oh no, first fight and I've got to get beat here. I was really nervous. But the kind of mentality I've got with my temper and my determination, like when I was younger, my dad, I think my, that's why my dad got me into Taekwondo as well, because like... I was a bit mad with my temper, like a bad temper. And if I got beat at anything, I used to go crazy at getting bad beat. Loser. Bad loser. Like if I been playing snakes and ladders when I, at mm -hmm. stuff when I was a kid and I got beat, the whole thing would go up there and I'm not fucking playing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was a real bad loser. So I was really determined, you know, and uh, I think that's why my dad put me into Taekwondo for a bit of discipline. Mm -hmm. Channel your energy. Aye, to channel it, way. yeah. And uh, so we went in there and I'm, I'm kind of nervous and that and uh, I've actually shitting myself going in. Because he's Scottish champion, you know, I'm just, I've never boxed before. But as soon as I got into the corner, I'm, I'm staring at him. I'm like, I'm going to kill you. Like, I'm going to kill you. I'm like, oh, I could feel myself getting off, like, tense. And we go out and we had the fight. And uh, we come back and the decision was a count, a, a draw. But what used to happen is you used to get a count back and it was a point scoring system, like, sort of 1 0, 2 0, sort of like I hit you as 1 0. It wasn't like the 10 9 scoring system and then it was always like kind of like a game of points and uh, it was a draw and then it got put back to a count back so it was like oh it scored the draw again so then it was like a double count back so it's basically who scored the first point won so he won it and uh, I, I remember I took off my, I took off my vest and my gum shield and chucked it away I'm not playing and, anymore uh, I took my high guard off and chucked mm -hmm. it away like crying with like anger like like mm -hmm. couldn't believe it and I uh, I went away and got uh, changed and um, his dad, Calm Susan's his dad, his coach, come up to my dad and he was like, how many fights has your laddie had? And he, my dad's gone, that's his first fight, mate. He's, Fuck off, I right, and that's not his first fight. He's boxed before, he's 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 really good. He's, he's, my dad's gone, I'm telling you, that's his first fight. He's only been boxing about six months. And um, I come away with that and, I, and that sort of, that's that's, that was started. my first fight. That's where mm -hmm. it kick-started, I and, even then, it was it wasn't even it wasn't. A, I never took it sort of serious either. I just mm -hmm. done it for to keep fit, and I loved the training, I loved the sparring, and I had since since then I stopped taekwondo. So I started just doing boxing, going on a Monday and Wednesday night, um, just doing it as a hobby really. And did I think, that push you or anything towards it, or did you just do I, it well, because but passion? Once I started going, and once my once my mates sort of stopped going as well. I went a couple of times on my own, but then after that, my dad started taking me. Um, he took me to my first session and then my mates wanted to come and then we used to get the bus up and stuff. So um, then once they stopped going, my dad used to take me, used to come with his work and used to, and then my dad took me around all the gyms, sparring and sparring with professionals and this and that further down the line. But even then it was just, it was just Monday, Wednesday, go and do a bit of training and sparring. So how, how, how hard was it to be for the streets of Edinburgh to then, Day training, did you manage to keep the heat? Or was boxing just your getaway, your escape to? No, it was just I. I was always I was never a, a bad lad, but I just always found myself in fights <laughs> wherever I went. I don't know what it was. Yeah. I just uh, I just always found myself in a fight um, wherever I went. If I if at the weekends we went up in Edinburgh or whatever, I found myself in a fight with another bunch of lads or something, you know, and. Um, there's a wee place called Trinent as well where was Pressing Pans and Trinent used to fight, Pressing Pans and Musselboro used to fight. So me and my mates used to go down and fight with the lads for the other towns and stuff like that. So I just found myself always always fighting. Um and I used to stick up for myself. But I was never a, a lad for a uh, confrontation. I, I used to avoid confrontation and like I used to hate arguing or like sort of confrontation with someone. Oh. But as soon as it, someone put it on me, my temper would go and I used to just 
attack them because I was small. Mm-hmm. I used to be great at headbutting people when I was uh, yeah, I was, Glez, I was Scottish Chris. Yeah, because <laughs> I was the perfect height as well. Who are you looking at, wee man? I was about that height and perfect height right on the nose and yeah. stuff. So that was my best weapon in school. Um, and actually, a couple of times I used to jump up and head their people and stuff. <laughs> and, uh, so it was a... Uh, I just used to always find myself in fights, you know, mm. just... Did you love fighting, though? You must have loved it if you were just willing to do it in a ring, out a ring. No, no, no the fact that I loved fighting, I just... Just my my temper, and then once I started fighting, I was determined... To win? To, to win, and, you know, and I, I used to get quite... Uh, I'm quite spiteful with my temper. When I lose my temper, I get really spiteful, like, turn quite nasty, and then... And then about an hour later, I'm going, oh, I shouldn't have said that, I shouldn't have done that. That, like was, that was really quite bad, what I said or did. So, um, it's just quite hot-headedness. Um, How was your amateur career? My amateur career was was brilliant. Um, was brilliant, aye. Uh, like I said, back to the thing, I never really took it seriously. Mm-hmm. I had, after that first fight, I had another fight, which uh, I then won my next, I think I won the Scottish, Scottish title in my seventh fight. And then I got selected to go for, for Scotland into the GB Championships. Um, on my ninth fight, I lost my lap against a guy called uh, James Dickens, Jazza Dickens. How was that for you? And, uh, Jazza for Jazza Liverpool. for Liverpool. Yeah, I, I, know I boxed him twice. Good guy. And uh, he beat me twice to pass the day. <laughs> 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 you know um, that you live that I, down. So uh, the first time, he, he beat me. Like, he outpointed me and had too much experience for me. The next again year, I, I had a bit more uh, experience then because then I went from there and I went to... My first international course to Finland, I came back with a gold medal, won three fights. I went to another couple of uh, internationals, multi-nations, and come back with medals. I think I, I racked up about 40 fights in the year, but they were all international fights away abroad when I was 15, 16. So the next year at the GB tournament, I got the final again, and it was Jazza again. And uh, I thought I won that fight. That was in Portobello Town Hall in Edinburgh. Uh, I thought I won that fight. The coach at the time, the national coach, Kevin Smith, he was for Liverpool as well. And he was a really good, really good coach. But he used to go mad at me because I, I never used to box the way. He was very good technical, like step back and hook. And I used to just get and have a tear up. And he used to go mad at me. But he was a great guy. And uh, I went to go down to see him. And I've opened the door. And who's sitting in the room watching a video of my, a couple of my last fights? It was Jazza Dickens sitting in the room watching my fights. Mm-hmm. Like, like, what the fuck are you doing here? You're, you're Frankman. Where's my coach? Where's Kevin? And he was in the toilet and I went, I went fucking crazy. Mm-hmm. He says, what the fuck are you doing? Like, <laughs> you keep watching him, letting him watch mm-hmm. my fights on your laptop and I'm away doing whatever. So anyway, as a, that caused a big uh, hoo-ha. We, I went, we went to the, the main Scottish, uh, uh, the secretary, and I went, he's, he's, in the, he's in the room there with fucking England lad watching my fight. Why is he not doing that with me, watching his fight, sort of stuff? But anyway, we watched the fight, and uh, we had the fight, and I thought I won it. I thought I won it on points, but he got it again. And uh, that was that. That was the start of me, like, my sort of international career. I then, I then started going to internationals all the time, away five, six times a year with Scotland. You know, I think I had to end up having about 150 amateur fights, and I think only... 36 of them were on my domestic card the rest were all internationals mm-hmm. so, which is not bad so a lot of good experience I then. had a great experience mm-hmm. I think after only two years of boxing um, I got selected to go to the Commonwealth Youth Games in 2008 in India did you get a bronze? and that's where I come back with a bronze mm-hmm. and I thought oh you know I was I'll, I'll do alright you know but every time I got in the corner there was no beating me like in the ring but I had that wee bit of lack of self belief you know like before, oh, I don't know if I'll do very well here. You know, I'm no, all these be- the best guys from India and the best guys from all these, they're bound to be brilliant. Mm-hmm. You know, and I uh, come back with a bronze medal and I was like, fucking hell, done all right there. But I wasn't happy at the time. I was mm-hmm. getting took the head guard off and because the- <laughs> 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 I was ahead, I was, I was, yeah. I was ahead on the fight. I was like eight, two up in points, mm-hmm. but I had a bleeding nose and the referee just went stop and stop the fight. And I was like, what? took my header guard off and I've chucked it at the judges mm-hmm. and like chucked it at the referee and I was, ah, took the gloves off and chucked it at them and took a big tantrum mm-hmm. and uh, I come back and my dad's like fucking hell son you've, you've only been boxing two years and you've come back for the Commonwealth Youth Games with a, with a bronze medal against mm-hmm. the best that people can give coming, you know why and uh, 
done brilliant. So I kind of, f- from then, I was like, right, let's let's see how far we can go with it. I started taking it a wee bit more serious. I started going to the gym every night. I started going, uh, I then left Meadow Bank and I went to a, gun, a club called uh, Gilmerton. And uh, I went for there and there was it was fully Scottish champions and great gym, you know, and then we went, they took us to Canada for a fight there and stuff like that. So I had a great, great amateur extensive amateur yeah. uh, do you think that makes a big difference going to a gym with winners there already mm, there aye, 100% established? because every weekend week out you're getting good sparring you've got guys coming from other clubs to come down to spar with you and stuff like that as well so yeah it was really good and then I went to the the Commonwealth Games in uh, 2000. Delhi 2010 mm-hmm. and come back with a silver then and I was like fuck it I'm doing well and then then they then progressed for there qualified for the Olympics the first guy to do it and I don't know it was about 30 years I can't remember the last guy who'd done it and uh, so then done that and then come back for the Olympics and then won the, the Commonwealth gold, Games gold in Glasgow. in Glasgow how was that feeling then that's when you were just kind of that's when you were starting to make a name then aye it was brilliant did you have a lot of pressure because you were favourite were you know aye well I was favourite aye I was um, I was selected to win the gold well touted to win the gold before I was even selected to go you know I was a poster boy um, mm-hmm. Scottish boxing and I had to win the Scottish Championships I won the Scottish Championships but I was on all these posters for the Commonwealth Games on top of the castle Edinburgh Castle with my mm-hmm. fighting gear on and the poster boy is Scottish boxing and I was expected to get the gold in because I'd got the silver four years ago and I'd been to the Olympics and sort of team captain as a uh, in 2014 and a uh, I, I did I felt a, 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 an immense amount of pressure on that but I used the experience from the Commonwealth Games and the Youth Games with the, the all the media and stuff and then the, the Commonwealth Games in 2010 and then the Olympics you know so I used all that experience mm-hmm. of being on the big stage and I, I never let it bother me and uh, come back with the gold it was brilliant it's, I honestly think that's the best achievement in my career even including the world titles at the minute why do you think that is? Because your first big one, I think because it's it's your uh, your pride of your nation. You know mm-hmm. you've done it for the full nation, and standing on top of the podium singing "Flower of Scotland" in the hydro, um, was just brilliant. You know it was just that's what you do it for. You go and you represent your country, uh-huh. and I just felt I just felt immensely proud because I had the the hopes of our nation to to win the gold, and I've then done it and delivered for it and got to sing. Flower of Scotland, Scotland on the podium and it was just it's brilliant mm-hmm. aye brilliant. how was your dad in that it must have been buzzing for you aye brilliant my dad's but my dad's always been one of these ones you're going to be world champion he's, he's sort of believed me for day one he says the only person that will beat you Josh is you. is you because because of your temper and maybe like if you're going outside with your mates and stuff like that that's the only person that's going to stop you for doing what you want to do is is you is a uh, he says you're going to be world champion you're brilliant so when I come back with the gold medal I was like told you told you you're going to win it mm-hmm. my dad's always had every confidence in me with every tournament he says you're going to win it you're going to have no no nerves at all but that's a good thing because if you're having your down days it's easy to just throw in the tools and just quit yeah but if you've got somebody back in your corner and you're feeling like shit just to give you that extra wee nudge and just remind yourself that you have got greatness aye. that you can achieve what you want it's yeah, all down yeah, to you yeah definitely aye and my dad my dad's always had that he's always you're going to be world champion it's like every, everybody that when we went to uh, all the other gyms and that, there was people saying he, he can be a world champion, but I never thought that. You know, I never. Mm. I was like, ah, well, me, Preston Pans, like we shitty town Preston Pans. Mm. You know, nothing in it. Like just me, Josh, for the, just me, Josh for the Pans. Uh, who throws his gum shoe? It's gonna be like gonna beat. be world champion. <laughs> I, it's, I okay, sort of like maybe, but mm-hmm. don't know. You know, I never really had that self belief. You know, I just I was just very determined and very driven in what I wanted to do you know it was everything I'd done I just heard about this thing called you know the law of attraction yeah the secret I I just heard about that like a year two years ago and I was like I've been doing that for years like because everywhere I went like to go to tournaments I'd be writing down bits of paper just say that the Tamar tournament or whatever or it'd be Josh Taylor Tamar tournament gold best boxer of the tournament and all that, I'd be writing it down on bits of paper for mm-hmm. ages and ages, and until I got that tournament come, and I'd come back with the gold medal, and I'd get, I'd get the the mm-hmm. best box of the tournament, and things like that. And so I was like, I've been doing that stuff yeah. for, for so years. You're already putting out the universe. See if you write it down, it becomes sixty percent clear yeah. in your mind, Aye, and more likely to happen. It's crazy because I'd I'd never really thought about it like that. I just mm-hmm. always thought about like drum it into yourself, like 
you keep writing it down, keep be- make yourself believe it. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? And uh, I've, I've been doing that for years. I've been doing that since I was about 16. Yeah. Doing that. And look what it's got you. Look what it's got me. Mm-hmm. Aye, it's mad. Crazy. Yeah, people might not understand it, but I always say, if you're unsure, the universe becomes unsure, that everything that comes into your life, you've visualised. You were, you were, your name was down my piece of paper for guests for 2021, and we're in the first month for 2021. Aye, here we I are. I had that list <laughs> last year of 90 people, and 100 people, sorry, and... They, all the guests that I got, I had 32 of them on my show. Ah, it's, it's, it definitely works. It's, you know what I mean? It's crazy. I don't, know, I don't know too much about it, but I'm like, I've been doing that for years. Things that I want to do, get a house, get, mm-hmm. get a car, get this, and been writing it all down. And mm-hmm. it's, I've been doing yeah. it for years. I've been doing it for years. Think whatever you visualise, you attract. Mm-hmm. Attract so it, the positive and the, uh, yeah, the goal. Frequencies yeah. and energies. And if you want to attract misery, whatever you've got in your life right now, you are attracting. Mm. So you've obviously attracted winner mentality, your dad, world champion. He's drugged that into your mind mm. constantly. I had big Dan Tullon and his his trainer used to say to him, you're going to be world champion. If you're fighting the guy in the gym, keep repeating yourself. Get the best guy in the, guy in the gym, fight him. But then after that, keep repeating yourself, you're going to be champion, you're going to mm. be champion. I'm the best in the gym. He became the best in the gym and then his UFC career booms. So def- it definitely works. It definitely works. It definitely works. But I never knew about the law of attraction mm-hmm. until someone told me about it a couple of years back. Yeah. I was like, fuck, I've, I've been doing, I've been that, already f- doing I've, that. I've been doing yeah. that for years, mm-hmm. aye. The Josh Taylor attraction, aye, just aye, put your own spin it's, yeah. been, it's been mad, aye, it's been crazy. Did you ever think about going to the Olympics again after 2014 Commonwealth Games or did you just decide to go pro? Well, what happened was uh, after about the 2010 Commonwealth Games, um, I then went in trials, I went, then went two weeks later to the British uh, Championships uh, got robbed in the final, and uh, I says, "Oh Jesus Christ!" And um, I was raging. The boy, the boy that got the decision pulled out the final. Um, so then I had to fight Tom Stalker again, after he had just beat me two weeks ago in the Commonwealth Games final. But I, when I, I had just lost my nana that week as well, like I was really close with my nana, so um, I never managed to go to the funeral and stuff like that. So I would lost my nana. So when I got beat, I went out and I got pissed. Um, went out all night with my because my mates come down to Liverpool, so we went out all night to like four in the morning. Uh, got pissed and I uh, went to my bed, and the doors went at like ten o'clock. Do, 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 it's the it's the uh, Scotland coach Mike Keane. Do you want to box a night? I said, like, What do you mean box a night? I've got beat yesterday. I've been out all night on the piss, Mike. Like I'm no uh, I'm no boxing the night. Just do you want to box uh, Tom? I said I'm no boxing the night. I'm not boxing Tom Stalker again the night in Liverpool, where he's from, to then on the BBC to then get robbed again. I'm not. I'm not doing it. Like unless I get unless there's something in it for me, I'm not doing it. So he went away and he went away and spoke to Rob McCracken, and he says if you put in a good performance, you'll get a trial on the GB squad. So I went out there and uh, I was I was three points up with 30 seconds to go. We had a wee exchange, and then the bell went. All of a sudden, he's won 11 10. Um, in Liverpool, <laughs> so okay, I just laughed. I, I just, I just laughed, and I thought, mm. right, okay. And and uh, if you speak to Tom Stalker, he actually, he actually agrees with me. He thought I won that fight as well. Mm. Um, so for that, that went on for there. I went on to GB. So then I signed the contract, and I was a, uh, uh, then a four year cycle. So I done the Olympics, but I was until I'd signed the contract to sign up to 2016. Mm-hmm. But I knew after I won the Commonwealth Games in Glasgow that. It was time for me to strike a pro deal. Do you know what I mean? While my name was hot, and Aye. so I left, and uh, <clears throat> I left GB, and I had to pay some back money with the funding and stuff like that. So, um, but it was the best decision I made. Best decision yeah. I made. Because I. it was still young. You've only been pro about six, seven years. I so I was twenty five when I turned pro. Mm-hmm. So it was quite late to turn pro. Yeah. You know. Um, aye. So I it's a, a, a turn pro after the Commonwealth Games because. My name was hot property, you know, in the home games, won the gold medal and I put on really good performances mm-hmm. in that tournament as well. So so you were contracted to go to the 2016 Olympics? Yeah, yeah. but the way it was in the GB, it was, there was a lot of sort of clickiness, you know, with, with, with coaches and certain boxers and stuff. And the way the way I qualified for uh, 2012 was I'd done it through Scotland where they changed it now where you could only go as one boxer, yeah. as GB to the mm-hmm. qualifiers. So I was like... I'm not going to get selected over there, the favourites that are in the in Were the they squad. fine when you left GB or were they brand new or was there no, a lot they of hesitation? No, they, they made me pay back money. <sighs> they made me pay back money. So um, I got, 
for winning the Commonwealth Games, I got I got ten thousand pounds for Sports Scotland, but I also had five thousand pounds for winning the silver in uh, in twenty ten. So I had to use I had that, but then they made me pay back that fifteen thousand pounds. Actually, they wanted thirty thousand pounds in totals, so I had to pay fifteen thousand pounds back um, to GB, and then they wrote down a clause that if I ever won a British title, pay them five grand, and if I ever won a world title, to pay them ten grand. So really, they wanted thirty grand of me. Um, obviously, I've no fought, I've no fought for the British title, but I've won the world title. So I've paid them. I've paid them twenty five grand. Fuck's sake! Back. Even though you had won in two thousand four, they still wanted that money back. Mm, even though you fought, because what they said was I was part of the the world class program, and if you ever like, wasn't there a time limit on it? So that I've won the world title last year, which is what five, five years, years later, five right? years, six years later. And still wanted the money, so Fucking I've, I've paid the bastards back mm-hmm. 30, 25 grand. That's bad that they can do that, though, that, that they still wanted money back mm-hmm. even though you'd fought those. But again, you live and learn. You see all these big organisations like say, are crooked as fuck. With, with the cliquetness, there, there was other boxers that left before the Olympics and never had to pay back a penny, um, which, which was frustrating, which just proved me right. For It was the right decision that I made. You know, I would have never got selected to go to the qualifiers and I would have passed... I would have missed the boat. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? So I definitely turned pro at the right time. Yeah, good on you, man. So when did you turn pro? Who did you? Which camp did you go to? Who was your trainers? Well, uh, but I signed with Barry McGuigan. So um, we we after uh, me and my dad knew that we're turning pro after the Commonwealth Games. We we're like we're turning pro, but we never really had any sort of trainer in mind. I wanted my my amateur coach Terry McCormack. Um, he's like a second father to me. You know, he's uh, he's he's been there since. Sorry, since I was about 18, 17, 18. Um, he used to come into the Commonwealth he used to sneak I used to sneak out the Commonwealth Games Village in twenty fourteen and go train with him every every day and stuff like that. And he's just been there every day and he's he'd been to all my fights as a professional as well. But I wanted him to I wanted him to train me. But fair play to Terry he was he said, I'm really busy in the gym, the gym's taken off now as well. Um I've got a lot of lads, amateur and stuff. He says if you want to progress to the next level, we need to find you a a full time better coach because I just can't do it so um, I still take Terry with me to all my fights and make sure he's there and I go and train with him every day so I've got a lot of love for him so he's still there yeah. with you Uncle Terry I call him uh-huh. aye. so your first seven fights you won by knockout turning aye. pro so I what happened was I me and my dad were like well, who are we going to go with we, we don't know and um, it was actually my dad that suggested Barry McGuigan and to go with Carl because what they were doing at the time with Carl and there was only a, a small sort of stable. Do you know what I mean? I would get the time that I needed with me one one on one time that I needed to concentrate with me rather than going with sort of Eddie Hearns, who's got fifty two hundred yeah, fighters. You know, you're not going to get mm-hmm. if you get beat, or you're not going to get you're going to get flung in at the deep end and stuff like that. So we thought, oh yeah, that that would be a good idea. But how are we going to get in touch with them? And um, it sort of went quiet for about a month, and then I was going down to the. I think it's uh, the boxer, boxing writers uh, dinner that happens every year and uh, I was up for the best amateur of the year award and stuff so on the way down me and my dad were going down and my phone goes and it was for a, num- a withheld number I don't usually phone it because it's usually my mates winding me yeah, up and yeah, stuff right? so I, I don't answer it because my, dad, my dad's been answer it you don't know who it is it could be anybody so I went alright okay so I got up and went for the other carriage and answered it and I uh, Oh Josh, it's Barry McGuigan here. And I was like, fucking what? My jaw just dropped. It's Barry McGuigan here. So uh, this is my attempt to Irish accent. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, he's like, are you going down to the, uh, the the boxing dinner tonight? I hear you're going down. I says, yeah, yeah. It says, um, well, would you like to get a wee chat about you? We'd like to have a chat with you about, about turning professional and we've got a chat to you and get your number off you see you down there. He says, oh yeah, I played it cool. Like, yeah, no problem, Barry. I'll see you see you soon put the phone down my my my, my, grin and my smile for ear to ear I went through like that to the carriage my dad's like what what I was like you never guess who that was on the phone he's like who I says take a guess and he went Barry McGuigan and I went aye he went what's that oh, so, brilliant. Says, so that so then that was the that was my mind made up you know sort of straight away a um, lot of attraction again aye sort of mind made up and uh, but obviously I had the committed to anything I, I says well I'd go speak to I went to, over to Marbella to speak to MGM at the time they offered me a great deal and stuff as well but 
there was only one thing missing was was the full time coach, and uh, everything at the, at the at the time that was the best best move for me. And you know they they took me they took my career and they'd done it well, and they took everything that I said and what they said. Their plan was brilliant. You know it was uh, it was great. So my career just rocketed. Yeah. How hard is it to be a professional boxer? The first ten fights when there's no much income is. How, do you need to tap money? Or is, how does it how does it work? So a lot of boxers I've had on who are world class fighters now they've got belts mm. have had like two jobs to still go to gyms and pay for nutrition and all that shit. How, no, I've how, been quite lucky that way. Um, um, you know, I, I did have like on the like on the for the way up. You know, I've been quite lucky, but there's at times when I was going to the gym, I never had even had a, a tenner in my pocket to get to the gym, and I had to tap Terry for money to put petrol or bus fares and stuff like that to get up and doing for the gym, you know, and I had jobs, I was getting paid off, I got paid off for about four different jobs one year because I was going away to multi-tournaments, multi you know, multi-nations tournaments and I was getting paid off because I was taking time off work and so there was a lot of times where I was like skint and no money and wondering what am I doing this for, I'm, I'm not getting any money, I'm skint, I'm, I'm living off my mum and dad, I'm Eight, I'm now 18, 19 years old and like I've, I've, I'm asking my mum and dad for a line of 20 quid to get to the gym and back and borrowing their car and I'm like what am I doing this for there's no there's no reward but I just kept going and going mm -hmm. I loved boxing as well so once I got into GB I was quite fortunate I ended up getting lottery funding so that kind of took the, the burden away and then obviously won the, the Commonwealth Games so I got a good deal with Barry and stuff where they paid for for the first two years they paid for my travel up and down um, my nutrition and and they paid me well for my fights as well I got a sign on fee a sign on bonus and I got a, I got paid alright for my first mm -hmm. six fights as well so that was that was quite fortunate that way you know so um, boxing can be hard that way so if, that's why I think amateur when you're doing amateur you've got to try and achieve as much as you can because it gives you the better a better deal and better starting blocks for turning mm -hmm. pro because you've got to fund everything for you for yourself as a professional. Yeah. It must help though taking a bit of pressure off you when you start moving through ranks, getting a bit of income because it must. I'd imagine it'd be stressful mm -hmm. trying to support a family, travelling up and down away from your family. Yeah, it was stressful. I mean, I was getting paid alright, but I had to really, really budget what I was doing from fight to fight. Do you know what I mean? I had to, I had to make sure I had enough money there to to last me for the rest till my next fight. Do you know because. I, I, for some reason, I just wasn't. They never, they never let me get sponsorships. There was a couple of guys there that wanted to sponsor me, sponsor me as a as an early pro. No big money, but money to help make my life easier. You know, like help pay for my petrol and my bills and what I had going out and and stuff like help pay for the training camps and like you no know, physios and and stuff like that. My nutrition and things like that. But for some reason, I wasn't allowed to get sponsorship or. Every time someone approached me, that kind of fell away by the wayside, and it was it was very frustrating. Yeah. So you won your first seven fights, knockout, and then your eighth fight was down to points. I think I won. I won. I won my first title, my seventh fight. It was I was a Commonwealth game, the Commonwealth title mm -hmm. against uh, Dave Ryan, fifth round knockout. Yeah. And he was he undefeated. He wasn't undefeated, but he was a good solid. Um, mm -hmm. He was a good solid domestic level fighter, and always gave everybody a hard night. Do you feel as if you've been fast tracked as well? Because it feels as if you've had. A lot more fights than seventeen. Mm. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, and you've got to, you've got to take the hats off to to Barry and his, to to the job that he done. You know, because I was twenty five when I turned pro, which isn't really a it's quite a late to turn professional. You know, and uh, I said you know I didn't want to be going back and fighting journeyman, but also his plan was to move to you push fast. me, move mm -hmm. me fast, move me aggressively. But I think the reason I'd done that was because I saw the talent that I had and how hard I worked in the yeah. gym and stuff, you know. So um, I was definitely was fast-tracked a little bit, but it's what I wanted yeah. because I didn't want to be going in having 10, 15 fights. You're going back a level with fine uh, journeymen uh -huh. and stuff, you know. Because you won, the, like you say there, you, you never fought for the British or anything, you just went straight to Commonwealth. Why I was that? The, I, went for the, I, fought the, I think the, the British was tied up um, at the time. I think it was... Uh, I think it was maybe Tyrone Nurse that had it, uh, but he had his mandatory against someone else and stuff. But the, the the Commonwealth was vacant, so me and Dave Ryan fought for the vacant Commonwealth belt and I won that. And uh, then went for there, went for strength to strength. Then fought, I, I defended it, had another knockout. Then I fought um, a former world champion. I think it was my ninth fight, my ninth or my tenth fight. Miguel Vasquez 
former world champion, and I stopped him in the ninth round, the first person to do it. Uh, Canelo boxed him twice in his early career. Here couldn't do it, mm -hmm. so that's another wee achievement for myself <laughs> yeah. as well. So I stopped him. So I made a big statement, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, and then and then after that, I boxed, um, I boxed Winston Campos, um, and I blew him away in two rounds. Um, but then I got the shout to fight Victor Posto for the world, world title, title eliminator. Aye. Um, and that was that was the only time I've ever been like, ooh, no, that's a big step up. You know, like this mm -hmm. is he had just beat the uh, Lucas Matisse and I think he stopped him actually, who was a monster at the weight. And I was like, fucking hell. I'm up against it here. Like I've only had what eight and ten fights or something and uh, I'm up against this former world champion. I thought, oh and uh, it was like if you win this, you either get a shot at Ramirez for the WBC or you go into the the WBSS tournament, so I was like, oh, I, I put myself. I, so, I put I, I I had so nervous. I put so much pressure on myself. Like I need to win every round in sparring. I need to sprint fast. I need to do this. I need to do that. If I don't get this punch off, I was getting angry with myself. And you know, and I said, I need to win this fight. I need to win this fight. Writing down Josh Taylor, like mm -hmm. uh, world champion, and going to beat Victor Postel on this notepad and stuff. And uh, but it's the only fight where I kind of sort of was half like you've got that that monkey negative nunky you can't yeah. do it you can't do it you know sort of thing like the negative thoughts oh what if you go and do this what if you get beat and oh, you're you're away from home all the time and you're getting stuck in shitty hotels minging places you're missing you're missing appointments for your for your physios because Shane's all late and an hour late for the gym every day mm. you're getting stuck in these crappy fucking shit places so I was I was really frustrated as well was at the that time your relationship with the McGuigans broke down I it started kind of what what happened was it, oh it was kind of happened with what happened with Carl at the time and uh, Carl was obviously told me everything and I was thinking like if they can do that to somebody they consider like family one of their own what they're going to do to me you know and I was very green at the time I put every faith and really trusted them and they, they make it the persona that they're, 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 they're your pal they're this they're, way, they're this way they're that way but they, they couldn't they give a shit and they really couldn't give a shit um, they just and that's when I started getting my own lawyers and stuff and I started seeing stuff and contracts and you know folk were uh, approaching me for to get sponsorships and it was fading away and I got a, an opportunity to do a, a documentary on me on BBC Scotland and they turned it back because they weren't getting money for it or they weren't calling it McGuigans mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So it, that's when I started getting pissed off with them and really downhearted. You know, I was way from home all the time. You know, I'm spending 90% of my time on my own, you know, like, and then they're all going out at night and getting, like, going out in the cars. With, there was going out in the cars with each other and going getting something to eat, going doing this, going do that. And there's me sitting myself in a I'm shitty hotel. Now an hour away in the train near enough by myself and I'm going I'm like by myself here I'm, I've shown you that I'm committed by moving away and just, anyway I was I got fucking frustrated and stuff like that but but this yeah. was before a world title fight this was before the, and you're the postal fight and you rooms and Aye. fucking this was before the postal fight why do you fight? think that was though do you think it was just I don't know. That's try to save money or uh, maybe I maybe it's try to save money I don't know but it was just it's no way like after you've just lost your best fighter it's no way you want to treat someone that you're, who's now your number one fighter. It's no way you want to treat someone if you want to keep them. Do you know what I mean? By mm -hmm. pissing them off all the time and making them feel unwelcome and and on your own all the time. You know, so mm -hmm. I started getting pissed off with them with, with loads of loads of things. But having said that, in boxing, I can't fault for what they did. The term, the fights that they got me, the opponents that they got me. Do you know what I mean? They, they done a they done a great job, which. Uh, I'll take my hats off and give them due for, you know. Um, and it's just a real shame that the relationships fell away, you know, yeah. because I, I have got a lot of um, appreciation for them, you know, and, and, and thankful for what they did, but it's, it's just, it is what it is. Yeah, it's just the business side of yeah. things, but the training you can't fault them for, yeah. because it's helped your career as well. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, the matchmaking that Barry did for me and the times that he got, it was, it was, it was brilliant, but it was just everything else around it. That was the one massive positive, you know, Shane was a good coach and Barry was a very passionate manager and, and done a good job, but everything else that went with it was just 
uh, a, a car crash. Aye. Mm-hmm. Aye. So how did that affect you then, going for a world title and eliminate a... Did you change teams before that? Well, I think, that? I, I think I actually... That actually showed my performance, you know, because I was, I was pissed off for the first six rounds. I was... Mm-hmm. Doom, 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 and I was just constantly pissed off all the time. And I think it showed them my, my boxing style, just very aggressive, bum, 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 go and... I then sometimes for, forget my defence and forget my feet work because I just wanted to go in and <laughs> smash the body bits, you know what I mean? Take all my pent-up anger and yeah, smash his face in. Aye. Aye. Uh-huh. So um, aye, it, was, uh, it was frustrating. So that was, I then after that fight, I then decided to say, oh, fuck this. I'm going to invest in myself. I then rented a flat in London, moved down full-time by myself. And then by that time, I was paying for everything by myself, my nutrition, my sparring, physios, my travel up and down it's when I had to go back and visit my family or my girlfriend and you know I was I was wasn't any for, further forward if, when I first started so yeah. I was kind of like fucking hell so it was lucky I got into that uh, WBSS and I did some great performances yeah. in there as well oh, you were phenomenal on that and that goes to show for anybody watching how hard it is to be successful that like people see you on the telly lifting belts mm. lifting trophies don't see Staying in the shite yeah. apartments, hardly any money, travelling constantly away from the family, but that will show you your yeah, character. It's, it's, it is. It's definitely it's tough, you know. But I, I was so determined that I was I was putting up with all the shit because I wanted to get somewhere where I wanted to go, you know. And it's the same in everywhere in life. When you start an apprenticeship, you put up with all the shit and you move up the ladder and you put up with less shit. Do you know what I mean? Until you're the boss, yeah. you know, or got your own company or something, you know. And I put up with the shit because I had a goal of where I wanted to go. But it is hard, you know, you're you're spending you're spending ninety percent of your life away from home and on your own. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? And it's it is a lot of sacrifice. It is it does get shit at times and you're like, What am I doing this for? I feel yeah. shit, I'm lonely, I'm a bit a wee bit down, a bit depressed because I'm not seeing anybody, I'm not talking to anybody, I'm not going out with my, my mate. So, you know, you're missing you're missing weddings, funerals, you know, all sorts, stag do's, everything. You're just yeah. doing it all for the boxing. So it is it is a big, big sacrifice, but it's been worth it for me. Yeah. And I wouldn't have done it if I didn't enjoy it. How do you feel after your first world title? How were you feeling then? Oh, it was brilliant. Was you know, it? Was, for me, for me, it was more like a... <sighs> Relief. Oh, I've done it. Mm-hmm. Oh, thank God I've done it. It's been worth it. You know, it's uh, all that sacrifice and everything. It's been, it's been worth it. I've done it. I wasn't surprised. Like, I don't want to sound big headed, but I was I wasn't surprised that I won a world title. I was like that was my fifteenth fight. Fifteenth fight. Aye, my fifteenth fight, and I won the world title, and I was like, job done, tick it off now. That was one of my. I was like, oh, it's been relaxed. I could. Mm-hmm. Re- I was just like so. Oh, I was. I wasn't relaxed. I wasn't like, mm-hmm. oh, I've won the world title. I was like, that's it. I've done it now. I've done it now, and then I think that I think now that's where. Now I'm, my confidence is 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 grew sky high the the self beliefs there now a hundred percent you know it's a uh, I really feel at this moment in time that I'm kind of unbeatable at the minute but the the way I'm feeling with my confidence and my my ability i'm I'm much more relaxed i'm happy i'm 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 just all oh, i'm different my the my whole my whole team my management my my team around me my coaching but I'm just so much more happy relaxed. And the self belief there, I, re- I really feel at this moment in time that it's going to take a really special fighter to beat me, mm-hmm. or unless I just have a really bad night. But yeah. I'd, I'd, if I'm performing on the way I can perform, I, at the minute I kind of feel almost unbeatable. That's the best way to feel. Feel unstoppable, feel unbeatable, and it's, your confidence <coughs> is through the roof, and, and rightly so, because when you won the world title, but then with the Super Series, that was a phenomenal series, man. Yeah. Some great fighters in that as yeah. well. How yeah. was that getting into that as well? Just after the eliminator. Well, after the eliminator, I took I took a lot, a lot from that postal fight, um, because I was so tight and tense and putting pressure on myself to say you need to win this, you got to win this fight, sort of like do or die kind of thing mentality that I had. But that's me just putting pressure on myself, and it and it showed in my performance for the first six rounds, and a. Uh, it, it taught me a lot because it then went to 12 rounds and I thought, oh, what if it goes to 12 rounds and I might not be fit enough? So that's why I was always like, train hard, train this, train that and smash it. And I went in 12 rounds with, with a breeze and I won the fight after like, I'll give a, I will admit, the postal buzzed is there in the seventh round. They, it wasn't a big shot, it just hit me right on the chin. It hit me like an uppercut left hook. 
then hit me another right hand left hook again four shots in the bounce I was like hell my le- and it's the first time I felt that with my legs like whoa like Bambi so like, whoa wherever there was my legs it was like I was it was like I was pissed uh-huh. I was like, whoa fuck. and I fuck fuck and like but I was very calm I was very calm as I say very very calm about it which, is, which has taught me a lot mm-hmm. as well I, I can be calm under fire and yeah. And I just, for that fight, I took, I answered questions about myself, the self-doubt that I had, I answered them, passed the tests, all with flying colours. So for that fight, the confidence come, the real confidence come and the, the self-belief and the drive, like, the, put the pressure off myself now. I mm-hmm. now know I can do it. I now know I'm world class, for sure. Everybody else knows it now as well. Now it's time to just relax yeah. and enjoy. That gives you a different energy, yeah. a different presence. Different that, presence, yeah. aye, and a different, different mm-hmm. mindset yeah. now as well. Now I'm just relaxing it, enjoying mm-hmm. it, and working on it, and uh, I feel like I'm flying. How was it uh, fighting at the Hydro? Brilliant. My second home, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's my second home. I, I won the Commonwealth Games there. I won, I won on my, my world title there as well, you know what I mean? So it's uh, it's been brilliant. It has been brilliant. It's, it is a wee bit of shame, though, because obviously... I, I'm an Edinburgh boy, Chukta. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not an Edinburgh boy, actually. I'm mm-hmm. East Coast. But uh, uh, it's a wee bit of shame that Edinburgh's not got any uh, uh, venues. Do you know what I mean? So I would love to have a big fight at Edinburgh Castle mm-hmm. um, or Easter Road. But I'd like to try and keep the football side of things yeah. out of it. I'd love to fight at Easter Road. I'd love it. but I think people would support you no matter what. I, I just want to keep that football side of things out of it because you'll get people saying, oh, I'm not going there or yeah. whatever. But... Easter Road, I've actually, Hibs have contacted me, said they'd be more than welcome to, to do it. They'd love to do it. So if the Castle one doesn't pull off, I'd love to do Easter Road as well. Mm-hmm. But I just think after I beat Ramirez, after I whip him up, I do my do my defence against Catterall at the Edinburgh Castle mm-hmm. on the Esplanade on a summer's night, you know, Castle lighting up in the background yeah. at night. You know oh, what's going to happen because you've already I, visualised that. That's visualized a lot of attraction I've again. visualised it. Mm -hmm. a thousand times a million times over and me coming Mm -hmm. out with the bagpipes and all that you know it'd be it'd just be amazing like I reckon you fit about 15,000 up there Mm -hmm. as well with all the that'd be class man that'd be class one off it'd be a one off Mm -hmm. event as well so I would just, uh, I would love to do that. Love yeah. to do that, and I, and I could happily retire after. That. <laughs> many years, I like, yeah, many years to go. Because I will then move yeah. up to hopefully one four seven, and mm-hmm. you know, there's whatever happens for me now is a bonus. I've I've ticked off for what I wanted to achieve, in my dream of becoming world champion. So yeah. anything that happens for now on is a is a bonus. For yeah. I could actually happily retire today and say, "Ask me had enough." I've done well well, but that's not my mentality I'm I'm, I'm going to do more I want to achieve more you've got to keep raising the bar how was it how was the Super Series for you? Brilliant yeah Um, did you get into that mindset that you were going to win it? aye because the the postal fight because I answered all the all the doubts and all Mm -hmm. the all the questions I had about myself I answered them and passed the tests with flying colours so I've now my mindset's like I'm, I can do this, no problem. Mm-hmm. There's nobody stopping me now. So there wasn't more pressure because you were going as a world. No, there was. Uh, no, there was. I actually champion. wasn't the favorite. I was the second favorite to win it. Progress was the favorite. Great fighter as well, Great undefeated at the it. time. Aye. Yeah, aye. So um, Ramirez actually had the, the chance to go in for that tournament as well, but he knocked it back. Why? Because you were I, there. I don't really, I, <laughs> no, because I don't really think he really believed. Maybe not so much him, but. Uh, mm-hmm. He had the chance to go in there and prove it, and all the three belts would have been there on the line, you know. So, and, and he knocked it back. So, so somebody could have been undisputed him, straight away. It's either him or his management that, that doubt him, mm-hmm. that didn't really believe in him. So somebody could have been undisputed aye, champion aye, possibly. after that tournament. Aye, but, but he, he decided to knock it back. That fight with Progre was um, was unbelievable. It was non-stop, mm. start to finish. I, I did genuinely think you'd win it anyway. Were you nervous going into that fight? No, I was super. Just complete confidence complete and utter confidence 100% confident to going into that fight mm-hmm. uh, I had absolutely zero doubts that usually when you get up to fights or big fights you uh, you get the wee negative monkey wee, but for that fight I was just 100% just I'm winning this there's absolutely no way is that fight me. of the year or did it get voted I think it got voted, voted. fight of the year as well it was some fight it was toe to toe non stop a great fight How did, a fight. did your head not get sore after a fight with all those fucking punches as well because that, that was non stop for that fight I was fine mm-hmm. it, my eye wasn't even sore my body was fine my head wasn't sore nothing but the Baranchek fight I was sore I was sore for five six days pissing blood for five days as well but um 
and it was quite funny because I won that fight. I won that fight and I went straight to Ibiza with my with my girlfriend, my mate and his girlfriend. And I'm walking to the gate and I'm like limping. I'm like, oh, my, my missus is a, is, is a, oh, excited to go. You know, she's walking away. Lefties, I'm like, oh, I'm walking. Fucking hell, Daniel, wait. I can't have the fucking walk here. It was then pissing blood mm. for about four days and my kidneys were sore. My head was like a melon. My, my jaw was away out there. And it was just like, I've got some photos of us uh, on the first night. Obviously, I hadn't had a drink. Um, so I got I had a drink and it went straight to my head. I'm put to my bed the first night, mm -hmm. but I've got a picture of me. I'm like looking drunk and my head's all swollen. I'm like the elephant man. <laughs> I'm like, uh, what's his name at the Goonies? Oh, Sloth. Sloth. Ah, yeah, it's like my jaw here, mm -hmm. big lumps there, there, like that. I'm like... Look at the state of it. What does your missus say when she sees that? She just like, oh, it was brilliant. But that was a great holiday. It was mm. actually, it was just four days. We actually hadn't planned it. Like my mate and his uh, missus had it planned. And uh, we were like, ah, we'll just jump in. Come on, we'll go mm. away. So it was four days and it was actually really, really good mm -hmm. just to get away. And we actually just chilled out for four days. Got pissed for four days, like, but we just chilled out at the pool and chilled out and went for really nice meals. There's and people looking at you? I looking at me, like uh, the first... I was there for half an hour and someone recognised me and I still talk to them mm -hmm. today. Aye, so I it was really, it was really Seeing good. Seeing that uh, Super Series final, did you think your eye was going to shut over? Was there a doubt that the fight could have got stopped? I don't know, because it, it didn't shut till maybe, I think it was maybe the eighth or ninth round. So it was already um, passed anyway. Aye, um, I mean, and that's when I was coming on strong as well. You know, I, I really feel I was taking over that fight. Um, it's like round six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I was dominant in that fight, but for round nine, I couldn't see. I couldn't see a thing with that eye for round nine. How does that affect you then, boxing with one eye? Well, it started then hitting me with things that I couldn't see, so I had to then move the angle at southpaw and southpaw, so his left hand, which was his, his best shot, was the one that was catching me because I couldn't see it coming. You know, I thought, oh, no, so I then had to move. My tactics then went out the window because I couldn't really... I was thinking, fuck, if I get hit here and I don't see it coming, I'm going to get knocked out. So... um the tactics went out the window the last two rounds because I couldn't see it was just pure uh, determination and grit to just fight I couldn't see what was coming I was just fuck you I'm fighting I'm how was it up. after the fight because when he got beat he seemed quite decent about it he seemed quite humble he, he gave you a shout out said you fought, yeah. you fought great and shit did that I, change as time I, went he, on he was he was he was very respectful with the, after the street after the fight and saw the better man won in the night and then about two or three weeks later, the excuses started coming out. <laughs> oh, it's because I was away in London, you know, I was away for three weeks, I'd changed camps and this and that, and if I'd been in America, I'd have won the fight and all that carry mm -hmm. on. So I kind of, like, I still respect him. I still think he thinks he's a real cool guy, actually, but I was like, fucking hell, man. You've not done, you've not done yourself any favours there coming away with these uh, excuses. But, um, aye, that fight was tough because the last two rounds, I couldn't see. So, and I was getting hit with the left hand I couldn't see coming and I thought I just, oh, fuck I, I need to get through I'm just going to fight him I'm just going to fucking fight you and there's no way you're beating me and um, there was a wee thing my, 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 my father-in-law passed away on the on the I think it was a September but no wait no what was it I can't remember now I can't remember the date 15th it was like two months no even that it was a month before the, the fight and uh, he passed away quite suddenly and I, I, I never really believed in like the spirit stuff and all that, but like on that last fight, the last round, it was like I heard someone going. He used to say, he used to call me Tinchy, and he used to call me Muhammad, but he used to call me Tinchy because he used to wear snapbacks mm -hmm. and uh, straight, and I used to I used to listen to rap music, and I used to call me Tinchy, Tinchy Strider, and uh, and I just heard like something in my voice, come on, you wee cunt, fucking dig in. And he used to call you, you can't all the time, like, ah, you wee cunt, and that, and he says, come on, fucking dig in, you wee cunt, and it just drove me to just dig in and, and, and fucking fight so it's like it's like he pulled me through the fight really and uh, then my missus went and got a, a, a psychic reading done about uh, about about a month after the fight and he was telling us like about the house about this about that and telling us things that only me and her would know and I was like fucking hell Spooky. so like there's going to be only, there's only going to be any, some furniture all the trophies and that it's going to be the, the centrepiece of the house and I've just got that wall Seen done the in the house and, the big and, and, and it's like fucking hell it's scary uh, but uh, aye that, that, he pulled me through that definitely 100% mm -hmm. Does that, how did your life change after that massive win for that super series how did it how does that change your life how did you be shot right into the superstardom then 
Aye, well, it's kind of weird. Kind of never really changed that much. You know, my popularity is shot up through the roof. If I go into Edinburgh and things like that, I get, I don't get a minute's peace. You know, if I'm going to the shops or going out or whatever, I don't get a minute's peace. Um, but I'm not really that way inclined. You know, like, I don't really go off and show off about, and I, I don't really go out that much. So it's not really changed that much for me. Um, I'm not a show off and. People and you know we we're like people didn't like show offs and big heads mm. and that we're in Scotland so we're no I never really show off and yeah. I'm not like that I'm kind of just down to earth and it's not really changed that it has changed but for the good things of getting invited to places and meeting new people mm. and famous people and things like that and but it's not really changed that much yeah. you know when I go back home everyone still still just treat me as do you know how Josh. well you're doing or is it just because you're living it it's not really feel as reality as much I, I think it's maybe I think it's maybe a part of it because I'm still mm. zoned in and tuned in but when you do sit back and you like you, you get messages for people or you, or you maybe reply back to some people and and you'll hear it doing the line. Oh, yeah! You reply back to my wee cousin, and this it's made mm. his day, and he's got into he's got into boxing, and this and that. He, he loves you, and you're like, wow! You didn't realize you have that effect. Uh, you know what I mean? You, it's, do, you're you, don't an realize, inspiration you don't realize that you're a, yeah. a role model. Yeah, you're an yeah. inspiration that people from the streets of Edinburgh, or Glasgow, whatever it is, that you can make it by hard work and dedication, and mm. and just fucking pure belief. Well, that's it. It's like I'm living proof of it. Like, and you don't have to be if like. In football, I used to have this thing. Where I was quite good at football. Like I, I played for, I got up to trial with Hearts and stuff and that. And I was I was too wee. I was tiny, but I was a great wee football player. But um, it's just I always had this. Oh, you need to maybe be for Glasgow to get picked up for Celtic or Rangers, or you need to be for maybe America to make it to be a superstar or this or that. And I'm living proof that you can be for anywhere. You just need the, you just need the the belief, the determination, and the sacrifice, you know what I mean? You've got to be willing to sacrifice for and do things that you don't want to do to 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 willing to put up with stuff that you don't want to do and do it. I'm living proof that you don't have to be anybody special to achieve your anything, your dreams, yeah, you know what I mean? Just, but for what you're doing, it is unbelievable, mate. It is, it's, it's brilliant to see that somebody from Scotland that is making new heights and making waves and, and is up there with one of the best fighters on the, on the planet. It's phenomenal. No, it's, it's phenomenal. It's crazy to hear yeah. it, like... And that's another one when you say it's like do you sit back and it wasn't until the first lockdown in March last year where I sort of sat that's the first time I've had a break for boxing, the longest break I've ever had. And I was like sitting there and you've got the you've got the well I would have had the ring uh, the WBC diamond belt, but I've got the WBC diamond belt, I've got the 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 ring magazine sitting there, the WBA, the IBF, the Commonwealth belt, the Ali Trophy, my WBC silver belt. I'm sitting there and then there's my Commonwealth Games gold medal sat there as well, my silver medal. I'm going, fucking hell, you've done all right, wee man. Mm -hmm. Like, do you know what I mean? You've, you've done all right for where you started off, uh, just going sparring and kicking people in the head and, mm -hmm. and all that. <laughs> <laughs> do you ever remember that? Going to be kicked heat. in the head. I can't remember who it was, not, but. Man, <laughs> That'll be his kicking claim people to fame. in the head. Ah, it's, it's, uh, you've gone a lot, you've gone, you've gone, mm -hmm. a, came a long way for jumping up in the head and folk and kicking yeah. folk in the head and. All that, so I, mm. you've done all right. So that was the first time I've actually sat back and kind of acknowledged, a acknowledged my yeah. achievements. Mm -hmm. aye. You were supposed to, was it defend your titles at the Hydro again? Is it Kong Song? Aye, aye, I was meant to do it. At the, I was meant to do that in March. How was that? Uh, last when year? It, April? Was it, was it March or April aye, last yeah, year? Was aye. It, um, how was that when that got cancelled? Did aye, it was crap. It was uh, because I should I should be sitting here talking to you now as undisputed champion. Yeah, you know, um, Ramirez. I was supposed to box Ramirez probably the later end of last year when I had the fight with, when I actually had the fight with Consong. Mm -hmm. So I should be sitting here talking to you unified hey, world undisputed mm -hmm. champion. Is that know? the first in Scottish history? Uh, well, for, for for all the four belts, aye. aye, it'll be the first. But it'll oh. be the first since Ken Buchanan. Mm -hmm. You know, and. Uh, that's mental, man. First since Ken Buchanan. You know puts I mean? you all up in it's crazy. That, that's a story, and that's yeah. a story as well. It's mm -hmm. a great story. Like I've, the first coach I had um, in boxing was actually one of Ken Buchanan's sons, Raymond Fraser Buchanan, and um, his mum was from Preston Pans, who obviously Ken was married to, and you know it's that connection there. You know, be the first person that's done it in Britain. Since Ken Buchanan, he's also from Preston Pans, the same town. It's a uh, it's a bit of a story there. It's mad. Mm. It's almost like a uh, destiny. You know, not get cheesy now. It's yeah. almost like fucking it's destiny. In the stars, kind of thing. Aye, it's uh, it's mad. And uh, 
Aye, it's great. I just uh, that's that's one that I really want to, I really want to win that fight and uh, take the belts back and show Kenny, you know, because yeah. because he's obviously sold all his belts. He ran into financial difficulty oh, and stuff. That's a shame, and, man. You know, he's he's not keeping too well now either. So it'd be good mm-hmm. to get back and see him and say, I told you, because he used to come into lock end and and train and stuff, and he used to watch me hitting the bags and he used to say, you're going to be world champion one day and. Uh, he come after uh, he come down to the house after a beat progress. She says, "I told you, you proved me right. Well done, son. Well done, son." She says, "The next time I just I said I've got one more to go and I can bring all the bells back to you." Mm-hmm. So I'll that's be good phenomenal. To do that. When you done Kong Song, you you done him in the first round. Mm. He's he was he undefeated. He was an undefeated fighter. Undefeated, had the same record as myself. Mm-hmm. I was sixteen and zero. And yeah. the body shot put him on the floor. Yeah, body shot put him on the floor. Were you surprised? Um, no, I wasn't surprised because I felt it sinking in, um, and I actually. About two weeks later, we found out that he had three cracked ribs and a, a laceration on his uh, spleen. So it's, it's a quite a horrific injury. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't look like much of a punch, but I felt it sinking right in. And uh, you had a lot of people sort of... had a lot of people just, oh, he took the money, he dived on Twitter, you know. Yeah. Uh, oh, he took the money, he dived, uh, this and that, and... But he, he came out there and he flew he threw the punches at me straight away, tried to take my head off. And uh, we, me and Ben done a lot of good preparation of what he was going to be like. And we knew that when, he, when we were in the clinch, when you go to break, he, he threw the punch. So he, he threw the hook and I ducked under it, put him against the ropes and I was working on putting my head off the line and sinking the body shot in, and I sunk it in. Mm-hmm. Um, it didn't feel like a... It wasn't a particularly powerful punch. I just placed it beautifully. Mm-hmm. And I placed it with speed so and he and scrambled and uh, so uh, it was a good shot you but I, I was due an easy fight yeah. so it was <laughs> the last four fights I've been yeah, in worlds, you know what I mean? and, and world class talent yeah. and that so I was due a wee bit of a mm-hmm. touch so I mm-hmm. had a wee bit of touch there and uh, an easy fight but yeah aye good you seem to want to fight the best the elite straight away I know a lot of fighters go for the easy money and go for top 10 fighters you're going for number one straight away you want to be undisputed how does that feel to just want to go cream of the crop and Aye, try and get the easy fights? That's, that's what I'm in the that's what I'm in the the game for. I want to be the best I can be. You know what I mean? I'm no I'm I really am the interested. See when you say like we were talking there off camera mm-hmm. about being the best fighter that's ever done it about Scotland. I, I'm no interested in doing that. Like I'm no interested in being tagged as Scotland's best ever. I'm just in it to be the best I can be. Do you know what I mean? I didn't want to be com- like compared or competing with anybody else that's done it do you know what I mean I'm proud of everybody that's that's done it in Scotland and, and kept Scotland on the map Ricky Burns freeweight world champion yeah, phenomenal. you know Scott Harrison uh, Alec Arthur is, is world champion you've got uh, Paul Weir you've got obviously uh, uh, Jim Watt and all that as well do you know what I mean Ken Buchanan Benny Lynch they've all been great yeah. fighters so I'm just I'm just in it to be the best that I can be and I really do feel that I've not reached my full potential yet yeah so when you is the Ramirez fight has that been done yet? Is it May we're talking? Is it's basically it, a is done deal. Why we're just we're just waiting to find out when it can happen. Um, we think it's might it might be in May. Um, think it's maybe going to be in May some point. We've not heard anything yet. So, um, and it's either either got to be in Vegas or over here. If it can mm-hmm. be over here, brilliant. Yeah. But I, I think I would prefer it to be in Vegas. Aye. Aye. This is you undisputed then, and then after Ramirez, do you go up weight or down weight? Because below you, you've got Lomachenko, Garcia, Lopez, and above you've got Crawford, Pacquiao. I think I don't know if Pacquiao would be even a good match, but it's a money fight with Pacquiao, isn't it? Yeah, well, he's my hero. Do you know what I mean? Is he? Uh, he's my hero. I, I named my dog after him. I named, Did the, you? I named my dog Manny, um, <sighs> and I used to idolise him and try and copy his style and this and that, and went over to the wild card to watch him training and. And things like that years ago. So, to share a room, uh, a ring, with, with your with your hero, your idol, that would that would be brilliant. Mm-hmm. That would be that would be amazing. So you would take a fight with Pacquiao? Of course, I mm-hmm. imagine sharing a ring, and you can imagine being able to say that you you shared the ring with your idol. It's, not many people can do that, and mm-hmm. and then to beat him would be would be even better. Do you know what aye. I mean? That would be it'd just put the icing on so, the cake as well. Don't aye, it? the plan is the, the natural plan is you know win this fight. Then do my mandatory, and then um, natural plan would be to move up to one four seven. I call it the sexy division um, because there's so there's a pool of talent in that weight class, and that's where all the life and I mean big life changing money fights is in that division. You know, you've got your 
Sean Porter's, your Errol Spence's, your Terence Crawford's, um, uh, Keith Thurman, your Manny Pacquiao's. You know, they're all like big, big money fights. Mm -hmm. So that's what obviously I would want to do. But we'll see. We'll see how it comes. There's also massive fights at one forty. There's a, a fight there with who's the English boy, the Battle of Britain, the uh, Jack Carroll. Aye. Aye. Bash him up at Edinburgh Castle after the beat Ramirez. <laughs> Why so, not? So that that mm -hmm. would be that would be brilliant. Mm -hmm. So, uh, aye, we've got we've also got fights with a rematch with uh, progress. We've got Lopez maybe wants to come up for lightweight. So I'm in a real happy position now. I'm in. I don't feel any pressure. I've I've went and achieved my lifetime goal of becoming world champion. As I say now. Everything that happens for now on for me is a bonus, and I know I'm going to be in big fights regardless if it's for titles or not now. Mm -hmm. um, but I've got a burning desire that I'm going to achieve more and I want to do more. Yeah. Who's uh, your ideal fight? Who's the one if you were to pick any fighter? Who would you love to fight at Edinburgh Castle? I think I think that now it would be Terence Crawford cause, yeah. because he's tipped as there's Canelo number one pound for pound, then there's him, you know, and a. He was he was undisputed champion at one forty as well, so to beat him would be would be the best achievement, the biggest mm. fight out there. I think uh, to see who the best pound for pound is. Aye, that would be that would be brilliant. Win mm. that fight. Say thanks, boxing. See you later. <laughs> I'm out of here. Uh, Shove I'm, it up your ass now. <laughs> uh, see you later. I'm not, I'm not pounding uh -huh. Mars, yeah. making weight, and being on my own. And what's I can't wait for you? For fucking years. Uh, what's that? A, a, what's that? Like a camp for you? What's a training camp for you? What's it like? It's changed now. The last, the last camp, um, you know, we're we're training more smartly now. We've got we're bringing a bit of technology in now as well. We're, we're data, we're using data stuff, and you know, we've got all these machines here as well, oxygen machines, and doing the test, my my maximum uh, CO two level and things like that. You know, so it's getting a wee bit more technical and more smarter than that now. Still killing myself every day. Um, or killing myself but I reckon I was in better shape there for that last fight than I've ever been mm -hmm. but it didn't feel it didn't feel like I had panned my fucking arse off as much do you know what I mean like every session with and McGuigan's I'm sure Carl said this in your podcast as well every session with them was was fucking solid Intense. it felt like you were going to die do you know what I mean mm -hmm. by the time the Wednesday come your body's in bits like Every ounce of you was knackered. Your arms were sore. Your legs, everything was, and then you've got to spar, and you're you're sparring over a couple of hundred rounds before a fight, and you're almost half burnt out by the mm -hmm. time you get there. But Carl's the a great guy, man. The four, the four, like the four, they four camps that I had the the postal, the the Martin fight, the Baranchek, and then and then progress. Four hard camps straight off back to back. By the end of the progress fight. My body was knackered. Do you know, mm. I need I needed a rest for boxing completely because I was yeah, fucked. Just recharge. Aye, aye. Yeah, I know you're in the gaff now with Lee McGregor and stuff. You got a few boys in here, aye. so shout out to them. We'll give Andy McCart a shout out. Aye, How aye, do you know Andy? Aye, he's, aye, he's a good lad. No Andy since I was about eighteen in Lock End. You know, he's yeah, uh, I fucking love Andy. Brilliant, mate. Brilliant. I seen him in a video in Vegas. Mate. I think it was Ray Crawler who's another aye, diamond. I, I, call, then. I call him, he him was the dancing the, about. I call him the boxing who or the boxing <laughs> slag. <laughs> The boxing slag, he's he, he loves it. Aye, yeah. He loves it, but he's a great guy. Well, oh, he's he's him, a great mate. guy, guy and he and he's getting to do what he loves. He's always, always loved mm -hmm. boxing, so he's getting to do what he loves, going around all these places and, yeah. and interviewing fighters. And <laughs> he's a good laugh. Yeah, he's, he's he's a good I've, known guy, for, I've known him for years. Uh -huh. Lee and he's he's as well. one as well. He's actually one as well mm -hmm. that used to say to me, "You're going to be world champion. Like your talent, you've got. You're going to be world champion." When I was eighteen, nineteen, mm -hmm. and I was going, "Hi, Andy." Yeah. Hi, hi. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like we never really believed him. It's mad how everybody believed in you at that time while you were still not doubting it, but you were always hesitant. Uh, I was always like, mm. "Yeah." How is it been with Lee as well? Is he going for the common? Is he going for the European Probably, he's, champion? He's fighting in uh, two weeks uh, over in Dubai, mm -hmm. so we're off to Dubai again uh, next week. And um, for that fight, he's fighting for his Commonwealth, and he's a uh, his Commonwealth on, on the line, and he's fighting mm. for the European title as well. Class, man. So he's flying now as well, and it's good to have him a wee pal back because yeah. he was he was with me before uh, when they were with me. The, uh, mm -hmm. Stuttering, can't uh -huh. <laughs> uh, with the McGuigans. Uh, so he left obviously before me, but he's back now, and so it's good to have him uh, mm -hmm. a wee pal with me yeah, again. Class. I. Listen, brother, for coming on today and telling your story, the career is just blossoming. It's just, you're going into su superstardom. You've got a whole of Scotland behind you. You've got everybody talking about you. But plans for the future going forward through everything? What's, what's your end product and all? Uh, to be honest, I've never really thought about it. Uh, I've never thought about what, I've, what to do 
uh, after boxing. Um, obviously, I've invested a bit of money in properties and, and things like that, but um, I've never really thought about it. M- mm. Maybe open up my own gym and maybe train. I don't think I'll be getting into managing and, and uh, promoting or anything like that. Poisonous, that? Um, aye, there's too much hassle that goes with it. Um, I think I would maybe like to open up my wee gym, you know, and maybe train some lads coming through, maybe, I don't know. Um, get back into my motorbikes, you know, if uh, motorbikes was my first love. I never for one minute thought I would be world champion at boxing. That mm-hmm. was, that, that couldn't have been any, I couldn't have been any further away from whatever I wanted to be mm-hmm. or wanted to be when growing up. Never once did I think about boxing. You know, it's just, uh, I maybe always thought I'd maybe be a, a world champion at motocross or, uh, racing motorbikes or something because mm-hmm. I've, I've been on motorbikes since I was about five years old that's my first memories was being on motorbikes are you told to stay off them now because obviously I they're would, high profile it's just sort of it's just sort of common sense now right? it's like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, although, although I've, not got, I've not got much of that either uh-huh. I'm, I'm, always, I'm still <laughs> flip, flying about my bikes uh-huh. but uh, I, I kind of put them away for the time mm-hmm. being but uh, after after I finished after I finished boxing I'll get, maybe get back into my bikes and Keep myself busy because I think it'll be I think it'll be tough for me when I retire because uh, I just like fighting. You know? it's just, <laughs> I need someone to take my aggression uh, out and I need someone to take focus my my aggression and my sort of my my, my energy into. I need something to yeah. channel it. You know, so I think bike racing would be good because that's quite aggressive as well. You adrenaline need, junkie. Aye, aye, I'm a bit mm-hmm. of an adrenaline junkie. Aye. Mm-hmm. How does it? Is that why you think a lot of boxers struggle at the end of their career because they just no got fuck I all think else so, to aye, do? Because you've got you you've got that. There's honestly, if you could bottle up that feeling, he, he winning the fights. See, like winning your world title fights and the big fights. See, if you could bottle that up and sell it, you'd be you'd be a millionaire. How long does that multi, feeling last for? The couple of days, few uh, hours. Aye, it's a couple of days, and then and then you hit a massive downer because you've got all that time building up, building up, building up to the fight. You win it, you have your celebration, and then on the Tuesday or Wednesday you're back to normal life. Mm-hmm. And it's, poof, quiet again. Obviously doing all your interviews and this and that, and then it fades away and you're back to normal life. Just back, and you're like, poof, you had a downer for a couple of days. Yeah. You're like, fuck, what am I going to do? You know, and then you, all your mates are back to work and you're all working. You're fuck, you're a bit fucking bored. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? So you can see why a lot of people struggle with it because, 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 shit because as well. it's a fucking buzz. It's, mm-hmm. it's the buzz of winning and the adrenaline buzz it's, it's amazing like so you can see why a lot of people and a lot of fighters struggle with it right? Aye. Um, but I think I'll be alright I'll be you'll I'll, be fine I'll get mate get presenting bikes. jobs mate get a joke get, I'll get back on yeah, my bikes and I'll maybe yeah. get back in the I'll maybe mm. do a bit of bare knuckle yeah. boxing or something <laughs> <laughs> yeah before we finish up with your mom Dan that must be fucking proud of you just that it stuck by you and believed that now you're lifting trophies and Aye. belts and they must be buzzing man it's good to see that somebody can make it and do well for themselves man I'm proud of you Aye, it's, it's good to much. see you, you looking forward to seeing your journey against Marira, uh, how you say his name Ramirez Ramirez and um, undisputed champion and then whatever else whatever Aye. you want to go up or down it's going to be phenomenal tell you what I think see. the lads have turned the heating up in here I'm sweating <laughs> like a fucking estate of that <laughs> under pressure but any kids for any kids just before we finish up for any kids that are watching um, who's maybe want to turn to boxing and, and give it a go what advice would you give for them Enjoy it, you know. It's like it's too hard to get me enjoy it. So you've got to enjoy it for 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 one. You've got to enjoy it, enjoy the training. Uh, if you're thinking about doing it seriously and professionally, you've got to you've got to really really be prepared for um, making a lot of sacrifices in your life. You know, doing things you don't want to do. Um, maybe even being a bit lonely at times. You know, being lonely. But you've got you've got to be prepared to work hard work your arse off have that self-belief in yourself if things aren't going for you because I've had ups and downs in my career all the time down lows when I'm like why am I doing this to myself and what for I've not got any money and blah 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 Um, you've got to have that self-belief and you just got to work hard and dedicate yourself to the sport because if you don't dedicate yourself it's too hard a game to um, yeah. to be getting in and, and doing it half hearted you mm-hmm. can get seriously hurt yeah. Josh Listen, nice brother, for you, coming mate. on today, I'm man. Get a fucking show on my table. <laughs> for coming on, telling your story, it's unbelievable, mate. And you've got the, the whole nation behind you, and I'm looking forward to seeing the rest of your journey. Brother. I appreciate it. Thank Thanks you. for having me on. Cheers, Thanks. mate.
Check out more of my podcasts on the right and be sure to like, share and comment your thoughts on this week's podcast. Thank you.